Hi, this is Glenn Hughes, and you're watching Loud Wire. Hey everyone, Gurhamid here from Loudwire and it's Wikipedia Fact or Fiction time with the legendary Glenn Hughes. Thank you so much oh, for joining me today. Pleasure's mine. Rock and Roll Hall of Famer. It is now official after all <clears throat> these years. About time. Now, Thank you. Now, uh, went through your Wikipedia page, mm -hmm. Deep Purple, uh, different projects, albums, all the stuff. I'm gonna recite some stuff to you. Okay. You can confirm or deny. I will. <laughs> and elaborate if you choose. Hopefully it won't be embarrassing. We'll see. Uh, first off, because they do get this wrong sometimes, you were born in Cannock, Staffordshire, England. Correct. Very correct. Uh, it says that originally you were uninterested in the Deep Purple job until some of the other members proposed that Paul Rogers of Free be brought in as a co-lead vocalist. Hmm. Great question. The Essex House, Marriott Hotel, May 73. I was in a boardroom with the guys in Deep Purple, Sands, Gillen and Glover. Mm -hmm. um, I heard that Gillen was the only one leaving. Um, the guys in Purple had been courting me for quite some time. So when they asked me to join, they wanted me to join as a bass player who could also sing some stuff, lead stuff. Uh, because they wanted, or they had asked, or were going to ask Paul Rogers, one side of my brain went, damn it, I'm a lead singer. And the other one went, oh, God, he's a great singer. And he became a friend. Mm -hmm. So within a split second, it was, it was a no, and then it was a yes, because I'm going, it's a good opportunity for me to be in a band of this caliber at that time, and to sing with quite possibly one of the finest uh, rock singers of our ge generation. So I thought it would be a really interesting move for me. So I said yes. Awesome. Uh, do you think that you would have still joined um, if Paul wasn't a part of the picture at that time? Yes. Absolutely. Because yes. I did say to them, I mean, this is being very, very honest, that I truly it was on the path at, in 1973 of, we, Trappies were selling some marinas out in America, and, we were, and wow. I was a lead singing bass player. Yeah. This is way before you were born. You know? <laughs> so I needed them to know, and famously I said this, I don't want to join and just sing ooh and ah, uh, you know. Sure. I said I want to be able to, to be part of a vocal team. I'm not saying I want to sing exactly like you know, you know, half and a half. I just, just, I just want to be able to use my voice. And, uh, and, and they said, sure. And we went out, we went at our business. There it is. Uh, Stormbringer. Uh, the slurred gibberish spoken by David Coverdale. Yes. From the extras. It's, uh, the, the, it's backwards. The backwards line. And do you know what he's saying? I don't. OK. But this is probably a first for people. Well, you know, we'd just seen the exorcist. And he, he was basically saying, and it was reversed, your mother sucks cocks in hell. <laughs> The from famous line. The Linda Blair, my ex-girlfriend, by the way. Um, oh, boy. Yeah, <laughs> do you, we don't want to go there right now. So, but he just said, your mother sucks cock in hell. And he, we just reversed it, and it's... <laughs> that's what it is. And sorry, David, I had to tell the truth. <laughs> yes. Okay, I need to go listen you to that. You can edit the word <laughs> motherfucker. If you Mark III, the final concert. At this point, the band was unaware of Richie Blackmore's decision to leave, uh, by tour's end, and managers had a feeling that this was going to happen, and yes. decided to tape the last three shows ah. in order to have some product available in case yeah. the band was going to split. Yeah, yeah, I think the reality is that we knew Richie was leaving, not just the, we knew. Oh, you did? We knew. Did you uh, intuitively Two months before. feel, or you knew for no, sure? No, 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 he, he handed his notice in. Gotcha. My God. He handed his notice in on the American tour, uh, the last American tour we did with Richard. I'm not sure if it was very late 74 or very early. No, it was early 75. Um, we had a plane called the Starship, and we were told, by, with Richie in our presence, that he was leaving. And it was no, we were kind of freaked out by it because, you know, we were losing a, a very, very key member of a band. Of course. Rich, we, you can't replace Jimmy Page in Zeppelin. How are you going to replace Richie Blackmore? So it was a really 
big blow, but we should have known in, on Stormringer when the song, he just didn't write a lot on Stormringer. Okay. He was, you know, heading into a more classical, classic, you know, but he wanted to go more medieval without yes. disrespect. He and wanted to go more. We've seen that now, yeah, yeah. of course. Uh, Black Sabbath, the seventh, seventh star tour. Yeah. Uh, while touring <laughs> to promote. Well, the tour for... <laughs> oh, this is the embarrassing one. Uh, it says you were replaced by Ray Gillen. I was. Due, Lovely fellow. Due to a fight with Black Sabbath's production manager, mm -hmm. you suffered a cracked orbital bone, Ooh, which left yeah. you unable to sing. Let's, let's talk about that. I talk about this in my book. Every band normally, in, in that period of time, that goes on tour, normally did a show... Uh, like at SIR, there's a, like a room that could get a thousand people in there, you know, in LA, mm -hmm. and we invited a lot of industry people. And and after that show, I went to the Cat and Fiddle pub in LA, giving you all the the gossip here. And I was, you know, I was overserved at the bar, if you will. And uh, I got into a bit of a fracas with the production manager, and he decided to take a swing at me in the elevator going up to my room, knocked me clean out. But he broke this bone here that went into my nasal cavity and blood went into my throat and, <sighs> and, and by Worcester, sorry about the mic thing, in, in Worcester I just, you know, we should have known at Meadowlands, people were going, well Glenn can't even talk. Yeah. I didn't know that, that I had blood in my throat and so when, when Tony thought it best for a replacement to come in, uh, then I went to see a doctor in Worcester, and they, they, they did a, a, a check on my, on my nose and throat, and I, it was caked with dried blood. Oh, my God. And they, they, they told me I, I may not be able to sing for a year. How long did it take? Uh, about six months. Oh, yeah, so still a yeah. long time. About six months to... to it to clear up, you know, and medication and, and therapy. Oh. But it was something that was not, people were just knocking me because they just thought I was loaded, which I wasn't doing drugs on that tour, but I was drinking heavily. Because playing to Sabbath fans, you have to bow down to the fact you are playing for Ozzy and, and Ronnie fans. And I wasn't suited to sing War Pigs. It was not me. And yeah. hence, um, but, but <clears throat> the incident that happened with uh, the fellow that hit me was very uncalled for. You don't hit the lead singer of the band in the eye before he's about to go on stage in two days in Cleveland, Ohio. Not the best business I've got a good decision. memory for that. Anyway, it was a very, very tough moment for us. And Tony did the right thing by replacing me with Ray Gillen. May he rest in peace. Yes. Not a good memory for me, but... The Sabbath fans need to know you are fantastic, and I'm sorry, and I'd do it all again for you for free. Brilliant. Uh, it says, I believe rightfully so, that you've been clean and sober since 1991. I have not. No. Uh, in my book, I, I, I got sober on Christmas Day, 91. I had a heart attack. Yes. While doing a wonderful drug called crack. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, that'll, that'll do that to you. What an awful, awful, awful chemical that is. Um, without being grandiose, uh, I, I was going for it. And yeah, I hit the deck. Um, and my girlfriend drove me to hospital. And I told them that I'd over-medicated myself. So I went to for treatment in the, in the desert in LA at Betty Ford. <clears throat> and I got out. <clears throat> in, uh, I went in, in in late Jan, got out late Feb, and went straight to England because I had a number one song with a band called KLF, which was um, a, a hit in 17 countries in Europe uh, called Me America, What Time Is Love. Funny enough, it wasn't released here. So I went straight to work. After coming out of Betty Ford, you're supposed to, I'm really going into it, supposed to A, get a sponsor and work the steps and go to meetings. And I, I did the opposite. I went straight to freaking work. So after, you know, a period of time of not going to, you know, I just don't, I don't want to talk about AA, but not, not working a program. Uh, I found myself in a bar in Amsterdam in 1994 going, I think I'm good for one shot of whiskey. Of course, that's how it and starts. And I had three relapses between 94 and 97, oh. all going to two trips to Amsterdam, one to Dallas. I'm giving you the full details, people. And uh, on November, 20, November 1997, I had my last drink and anything that affects me from the neck up. 
uh, Black Country Communion. It said that a band called Black Country yes. from Baltimore yes. demanded half a million dollars yes. for the rights this to This is a use good one. True. True. Now we did, we did have our lawyers go back and forth with them, and okay. we did buy the brand from them. So why didn't we call the band Black Country like I wanted, like I came up with that name, Black Country? Yeah. Well, because <laughs> we were in, 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 in a law thing with them for two, maybe 10 weeks, and we needed to get the album done, we needed a brand, that we, so we just, I just said, let's just call it Black Country Communion. And then we bought the name, because we, in, we, in uh, we were trying to buy the name from them. It wasn't for a half a million, by the way. I, would hope not. I can't yeah. tell you the number it was. But we do own the name Black Country, okay. and uh, in right, right, rightfully we should have been called Black Country. But these fellows from Baltimore were were fighting, uh, verbally fighting with us, and, and you know threatening us, and you can't. Oh. We'll we'll have thousands and thousands of our fans follow you. And I'm going. I Google and I'm going. They've got like seven hits on YouTube. <laughs> now I'm not being disrespectful, but. Um, Do you know I was in Deep Purple? <laughs> yeah, but no, I'm not going there. But, uh, I, I get it. They were young, white generation, young guys that wanted to make a buck. Sure. And they did make a buck. So, um, yeah, I, you know, we, we basically threw away some money there. Um, but we wanted that, that brand. And so it should have been called Black Country, but we had to call it something else. But, and Black Country Community is a pretty cool name. That's so. a good name. Absolutely. Yeah. And, and long may that band live because that that is a very special band for me i will never be in another band after black country wow really no um it was the the band itself when i l listened to those albums and listened to the work we did was so incredible and so unique that um it was it was something that i'm very 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 proud of. i'm getting older now and i i just want to work on developments that i can you know feel that I can be part of more, sure. so. But uh, it's a great, great, great band. Awesome. I want to thank you so much for stopping yeah, pleasure's by. Pleasure's mine. Appreciate your time so much. Thank Mr. you. Glenn Hughes. Uh, the tour, postponed tour, is going to be happening very soon. Yes? Is, uh, did you August, say August? 9th, August 9th in Annapolis, and um, it runs up till September 3rd, finishing in Los Angeles, or Las Vegas, one of those beautiful towns where I live. All right. So get ready for those tour dates, everyone. Glenn Hughes. Thank you. Peace.